yo yo what's the word youtube got the new camera set up you feel me how you guys like it you guys you guys fucking with i told you if we get you know get a little bit more traction on here i'm gonna start getting a little bit more crazy on the production but anyways um yeah we're about to be at 500 subscribers if not probably by the time you see this video we're gonna be there uh and if you see this video and you're new because you know it seems like youtube is recommending my videos all of a sudden which is cool um you know if you, like i said if you're not subscribed subscribe doesn't hurt content's getting better and better i think uh and you know the next goal is get a thousand subs but anyways today's video is basically going to be about the most affordable preamps you can get and i guarantee you you will not find any preamps that will beat this and uh yeah they're always going on sale so you know i would say like a few times a year they're always going on sale and yeah, you're just not gonna you're just not gonna find a cheaper preamp and a preamp that sounds good, if not just as good as the real hardware. So yeah, let's hop in the computer. This this little beat I made, I'll play it in a second, and um, I thought it was a good way to show these three preamps basically. So let me just play the beat. So yeah, you get the gist. I'm going to focus on the bass just because it has the most energy. And I feel like it's a good way to show off like what these preamps do and what they're capable of doing, basically. And yes, spoiler alert, they are UAD preamps, basically. First one is the Avalon 737. And I am very, very familiar with the hardware. I used it a shitload at the studio I used to work at. Um, whether it was for vocals or bass or guitar or sometimes even uh, keys. I feel like UA did a I feel like UA did a pretty good job with emulating this. So let's play it just right out of the box, default, see what happens. So yeah, obviously this compressor is, uh, you know, smashing it. But like I said, this is a default straight out of the box. Um, the reason I like this preamp is obviously because it's a tube preamp. And I like tubes. I think if you're going for a coloration, then you're definitely going to go for tubes. Got high pass filter. You can crank the gain, get a little bit more harmonics, get a little bit of distortion out of it. Um, it's got, you know, you got a pad on it. You got a phase switch, which is nice. Uh, obviously you have a compressor as you can see and then you have an EQ section that's really really nice in my opinion especially on vocals I mean this thing is probably mostly known for being on vocals and man that 32k sometimes that 20k and you can kind you can really crank it uh, it sounds really really good I usually this is one of the rare times where if I have access to an Avalon and I'm using it I'll definitely use the EQ uh, and record on the way in just because it cuts and it boosts so nicely. Um, but yeah, so this is definitely the first choice I would do. Well, not not in, in any specific order, but if you're looking for something like this, I would definitely stick with the UA one. The next one is the Manly Vox Box, which I have praised. Yeah, this thing pretty much got my YouTube channel started. It was like one of the more popular videos to pop off, pop off back in the day. Um, but this is also one of the first preamps that I bought. This sounds pretty similar. I will say that in my opinion, the Vox Box definitely sounds more uh, colored and more tubey. Not that the 737 doesn't, but this is definitely, you can tell like they're aiming for that sound. I've used a lot of manly hardware. The only difference I will say is that their EQ is slightly different. It's a little bit more Poltec style and you only have uh, boosted bands on the low and high. The mid is a reduction band, so. And then you have this little transformer button, which uh, I would say is obviously different from this. And I've never used the real hardware, but the Manly Vox Vox compressor is definitely a lot less grabby than the 737. This is more similar to an LA-2A, the way it reacts. Obviously, yes, you do have an attack and release, but even with messing with it, it's just a lot less, uh, grabby than the 737 is you get you know liner mic 
face flip, high pass filter. And then you also have like a clean input knob for gain. And then you have your, I don't know how to explain it. It's basically just the amount of energy that you're pushing into the tubes, I believe so. So basically with this, you're getting a lot more coloration and then you kind of just dial in with the input. If I'm correct, I remember that essentially the way the signal flow works on this is that it's gain first and then input. Um, so you would think it's, you know, kind of falling down like this, but as far as I know, I'm pretty sure it's gain first and then input. And then, um, I think compressor after, I don't know, look it up. The signal flow is very interesting on this. And then the one last thing to note is that it has a de which is a plus. I've definitely used it before and it's definitely come in handy, but yeah, so that's the manly Vox box. And then this last one is something that I've talked about before. And in my last video is the API channel strip. I like the API channel strip a lot. I like their consoles. I've, you know, had the pleasure of working on them a few times and yeah, I mean, there's really nothing to say about it. It's just, it's API. It's good. Well-known brand. They have a specific sound. In my opinion, it's very clear. I know people describe the API as being punchy, which I get what they're saying. It definitely is. But the first, if I had to describe it, the first thing that comes to mind is super clean, just kind of a workhorse. You can really push this thing. I mean, the EQs on it are really good. You get two different types. You get their 560 and their 550, which are their, you know, two classic EQs from them. Similar thing, pad, face flip, filter, um, you get to switch between line and mic, and then you have your actual filter section. You have a compressor section, which is really nice. I really like this compressor. I will say this compressor can take a lot before you start really seeing or hearing anything. In my opinion, it's super, it can be super transparent, but still compress. And then you get the gate, which I've personally never used their gate. Then my favorite part is the EQ. You get both of their styles of EQ. They're both super useful, both versatile. And like I said in my last video, if you watched it, if not, I'm sure it'll pop up somewhere at some point in this video, or maybe it already has. Um, just running stuff through this makes and changes the tone a lot. Let me know if you hear the difference. So here we go. So did you hear anything? Was it too subtle? I think, you know, it's it's pretty subtle. I feel like you can definitely hear it overall, like on a mix the most, especially when you feed it um, a lot of transients and stuff, you can definitely hear harmonics and whatever that's coming from, I would assume, you know, transformers or op amps and stuff that they modeled. So pretty much it, That's these are my top, I don't even call them top, but these are just like my three must have preamps, I guess, if you were, if you're on a budget and you're looking for something a little bit more saucier than your focus ride or some shit, even having the native versions of these still gets me to that sound that I'm used to when tracking through them. Like if you don't have an Apollo, the only difference from my understanding, and I asked UA about this, if you're mixing, the only difference between using the native version and the actual UAD2 version, meaning the version that you can record through or record with in real time, is that you're not getting that impedance matching, which is their technology or the way they're able to capture what it would sound like recording through that real piece of gear, basically. That's the only difference, but you know, to be honest, like I've mixed with these and using the native ones, um, it still gives me, you know, a certain sound or a sound that I'm chasing or whatever I'm expecting these to sound like, it still definitely gets me there. So in my opinion, you're not really losing that much. Let me know your thoughts. Anyways, yeah, so these are the three I would definitely look into if I was on a budget. But like I said in the beginning of the video, if you're new here, please subscribe. I'm trying to get to a thousand subscribers now. Like I said, hopefully by the time this video comes out, maybe by tonight, uh, I will have 500 subscribers or close or whatever. But anyways, shooting for that big 1K this year. So, yeah. 
holla at your boy peace